Hello, I'm Neil Nunes with the BBC News. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has agreed to support Sweden's bid to join NATO on the eve of a major summit for the alliance in Vilnius. Turkey's parliament is now expected to ratify Sweden's membership. NATO Secretary-General Jens Stoltenberg said completing Sweden's accession to the alliance benefited all members at what he called this critical time. Here's our Europe editor Katja Adler. For more than a year, Turkey blocked Sweden's membership of NATO because it felt Stockholm was soft on Kurdish separatists and too accepting of several incidents of Koran burning in the country. But Sweden has changed laws, expanded counter-terrorism cooperation against the Kurdistan Workers' Party and restarted arms exports to Turkey. So, just before NATO's high-profile annual summit, Turkey announced a change of heart. Good for NATO because the alliance is keen to project a united front at this summit. United in ongoing support for Ukraine, united against Russian aggression. The Israeli parliament has voted by a narrow margin to advance legislation designed to restrict the powers of the country's judiciary. The contentious bill by the right-wing government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has sparked 27 weeks of protests. Caroline Topozoglu has this report. With its first reading completed in the Knesset, the bill has made its initial step towards full parliamentary approval. The new law will mean the Israeli Supreme Court cannot overrule certain government decisions it deems to be unreasonable. Other reform proposals include giving the government a greater say in the appointment of judges. The Netanyahu government says that changes will ensure a better balance of power. The Prime Minister is on trial for alleged corruption, charges he denies. His critics say he's trying to grant Parliament the power to overturn potential court decisions against him. Protesters have been preparing to stage what they call a nationwide day of action on Tuesday. Nigeria's state-owned oil company says an oil tanker carrying 800,000 litres of stolen crude has been intercepted offshore while heading to Cameroon. It said the vessel would be destroyed as a deterrent. Iron Skippers has this report. Nigeria's National Petroleum Company said the oil had been stolen from a well in the southwestern state of Ondo and that there was no valid documentation for the cargo. Oil theft from pipelines and wells in the Niger Delta is a major problem for Nigeria, depriving the country of much-needed revenue. The administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has pledged to tackle the problem. The destruction of the oil tanker should certainly serve as a stern warning to those engaged in oil theft. The oil company said that the last reported location of the Nigerian registered tanker was 12 years ago and it had been operating in stealth mode since then. World News from the BBC. At least 41 people are now known to have died in three days of heavy rain and flooding in northern India. Video footage shows rivers overflowing with bridges and houses being washed away. Eight South African police officers who were caught on film assaulting two men on a motorway earlier this month have now been suspended from their jobs. One of the victims was left unconscious after a kick in the head. The incident sparked outrage in South Africa over the issue of police brutality. A police spokeswoman said the officers would be subject to disciplinary procedures and no further information would be given. The authorities in Mexico say at least nine people have died in an arson attack at a wholesale market in the central city of Toluca. The local mayor believes the attack was probably caused by a dispute over the location of market stalls. Toluca has Mexico's second busiest market, which attracts on average 26,000 people a day. A trial has begun in the United States to resolve a dispute over the estate of the late singer, soul singer Aretha Franklin, five years after her death. Three of the singer's four sons are contesting how her fortune should be divided. Here's our North America correspondent, David Willis. Aretha Franklin was known to be intensely private about her finances and was initially thought to have died without drawing up a will. Subsequently, however, three handwritten documents came to light. Voicemail messages have also surfaced, recorded only months before her death, in which the singer can be heard discussing another will with her estate lawyer. Miss Franklin's third child, Ted, maintains an earlier document listing him as co-executor and conferring lesser benefits on his fellow siblings should take precedence. The trial is expected to last until the end of the week. BBC World News.